It happens every single day. A wrestling fan actively decides to quit watching professional wrestling. How do they get to this tipping point? I think there are six factors, and I'm going to break down all six of them next. I'm Mike Quackenbush, and this is Till We Make It. If you are passionate about the craft of professional wrestling, and you're never done learning all about it, then you've landed in the exact right place. Go ahead, join the Till We Make It tribe down below. Subscribe, and do the things other YouTubers are always begging you to do, like ring the notification bell, leave a like a palooza. As we go, don't be afraid to drop your thoughts in the comments. Today, I want to look at six factors that lead to the tipping point that causes pro wrestling fans to actively quit their fandom, to make them stop watching. How does it get to that point? This first factor is also the most obvious. It's the first one I thought of, and I'll bet it's the first one you thought of too. When considering the factors that cause wrestling fans to actively quit their fandom, I think, first and foremost, it is because the characters they formed emotional attachments to early on in their fandom are all gone. There was a cast of characters that they grew to love at the same point in time that they became enamored of professional wrestling as an art form. But of course, wrestlers retire. Wrestlers move to other organizations. They're forced out by injury, by age, by whatever. And eventually, that entire cast of characters is gone. And if there haven't been any new ones to replace them with the same level of deep emotional investment, well then that connection is irrevocably severed. And once that's cut, it's very easy for someone to decide that they are actively quitting wrestling. A few of these six factors I want to break down for you today, I feel like no one is talking about. But this second one on my list, it's not one of them. I think this one's pretty obvious too. It's that the need to maintain a certain status quo within a company or a roster means there's a lack of consequences in the storylines, in the angles. So just as an example, think of how rare a loser must retire match is. Someone is being forced out. That is a real consequence. And even when we see a match type that has inherent consequence, we often see those stipulations ignored, walked back. They're reversed the very next night, whatever. Those consequences are negated. And after you've been on the ride for so long, and there simply are no lasting consequences, it makes everything feel pointless. I can think back to the first time I ever rode on a merry-go-round. Part of the reason that this carousel ride was memorable was because it's one of the first photos my parents ever took me. I was that small. I was a toddler when I was put on a carousel. And initially, that was the most exciting ride in the entire universe to me when I was two years old. But after you've gone around and you realize, I'm just going around in circles, you start to crave something that's a little more exciting. You want a more thrilling ride. You don't, by the time you're in your teenage years, probably experiencing that same level of thrill on the carousel that you did when you were a toddler. You're ready for the roller coaster. You want something that is more thrilling. And I think storylines with no consequence are just like staying on the carousel for your entire life. Nothing ever changes. It just returns to the same status quo. And I think after a while, that gets a little boring. This next one is one I find to be unique to the social media era of wrestling. So listen closely. A third factor in this equation we cannot ignore is this. Staying current with what's happening in professional wrestling now demands more time and more attention than ever before. And as a wrestling fan ages and takes on more responsibility in their private life, it may start to feel as if wrestling is leaving them behind because dedicating that time and attention and even disposable income to their wrestling fandom, it becomes impossible. And here's how that's amplified in the social media era of wrestling. In order to stay current with what's going on with, let's use AEW as an example, not only is it demanding on your time and your attention, 
but it also forces you to have to change platform. So yes, you have to watch all the AEW televised programs on TBS and TNT, and you'll do that through your cable provider. But what about the supplemental material? If you want to watch BTE, you have to switch over to YouTube for that. Or what happens if something launches through Eddie Kingston's social media? Again, you have to change platform in order to stay current. And that is also exhausting. That can be frustrating to fans who have very limited amounts of time and very limited attention to devote. And together, the effect can be that they feel like they just have to quit watching wrestling. This fourth factor that could lead a fan to actively quit wrestling is one we can readily wrap our minds around. It's when the state of the art of wrestling has evolved to the point that what's happening in the ring no longer resembles the wrestling that someone first fell in love with. So imagine for a moment that what you were first exposed to and fell in love with was the professional wrestling being presented by Jim Crockett Promotions back in 1984. This is right as the nationalization is beginning and the transformation into the cable TV era has started. You are watching latter-day territory wrestling. It looks like two big and burly grandpas pounding each other bloody in smoky arenas with, let's face it, relatively low production values. If that is the wrestling you love best, and there's nothing wrong with it because Jim Crockett promotion stuff from 1984 is pretty awesome, but nevertheless, does that bear any resemblance to Technicolor NXT? Well, other than the fact that they both happen to take place inside the squared circle, very little resemblance whatsoever. And because that state of the art is so different from the tastes, the preferences, and the nostalgia that a fan has for professional wrestling, it just disconnects them utterly from what's going on. That makes it easy to simply quit. This fifth factor is more relevant right now than it ever has been before. And it's the phenomena that occurs when the meta conversation around wrestling takes precedence over the actual finished product being presented by wrestling organizations. And I'm talking about the kind of stuff that of course is perpetuated by internet discussion forums or rumor mills or gossip sites, etc. When that is more important than the actual angles and in-ring wrestling that are being presented as finished product, it undermines the value of watching. In fact, it almost makes it pointless. You are made to feel stupid for watching that because the real conversation about wrestling is, just as an example, it's about the real life drama of people behind the scenes. It's about the machinations of the corporation and why they are hiring certain people or firing other people. When that conversation, the meta conversation, takes precedence over the actual finished product, then engaging with the actual finished product starts to become irrelevant. Not only is the meta conversation around wrestling frequently dull and often depressing, like finding out this person needed time off for a cosmetic surgery, or this person was pulled from TV because of a wellness policy violation, it can also be exhausting to try and track all of that real life drama and parse the gossip and the fiction from the reality. And when that conversation takes precedence over the finished in-ring product that is presented easily for anyone to consume week over week, when there's nobody left to even have a conversation about that because the community is placing importance on the meta conversation, I think it's very easy to understand why a wrestling fan would just quit. Something tells me that my breakdown of this sixth factor that makes people actively quit wrestling will ruffle some feathers before it's all said and done. But here we go, gang. There is a certain demographic that is being left behind by the way in which wrestling is currently crafted. And because I can't think of a specific example, I'll give you a kind of generic one to understand what I mean. I'm sure somewhere in wrestling right now, there is a feud going on that lives exclusively on Twitter. Someone tweeted something at another wrestler, and then that wrestler tweeted back, and then they started a Twitter beef, and this is going to escalate eventually into them having a match. And to someone who finds Twitter beefs to be frivolous and absurd, 
the idea that two human beings are going to put their bodies in jeopardy at risk of injury to resolve a Twitter beef, to that fan, it will feel as if this wrestling is not being crafted with me in mind. And that disengagement is exactly what causes them to quit pro wrestling. A different example to the same point. If someone is rigidly locked into their own socio-political world view, and a wrestling organization seems to be telling stories from an alternate socio-political world view, well, to that audience member, it will feel as if this wrestling isn't being written for me. And that does cause disengagement. And that is a reason why people actively quit watching wrestling. Okay, those are the six factors on my list. Now I want to know what's on your list. Drop it below in the comment section for me right now. And I'm also going to link you to a video about overcoming wrestling burnout because I think it may be neatly related to what we're talking about right now. I publish on the YouTube channel every Wednesday and Friday, but I also publish every Tuesday over on my Patreon. You'll get an exclusive video when you join our community over there. You can start for as little as five bucks.